video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from the CreativeDojo.net. Welcome to an After Effects tutorial. Today's actually not even a tutorial, it's not even a quick tip. It's just kind of a discussion as to kind of where After Effects is going in terms of 3D. Now, as of the latest After Effects build 23.1, build 44, you can actually import native 3D stuff right within After Effects. Now, After Effects has a long history of importing 3D stuff from Cineware to the Cinema 4D renderer to stuff like plugins, Element 3D, Stardust. There's a whole bunch of ways to kind of bring in stuff into After Effects. I think the most prominent one was probably Element 3D, where you can import OBJs and OBG sequences and animate them, place materials. But as of right now, Element 3D hasn't had a very large update in a very, very long time. And so now with this latest beta, you can actually go ahead and import OBJs, GLBs, and GLTF models directly into your project. And you can actually drop them right into the composition and kind of manipulate them, sort of. Now again, this is still a public beta, so you can go ahead and access it through your Creative Cloud app and just download the beta to try it out. So I have two models here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new composition and we'll just call this 911, hit okay. And I'm gonna drag this model right into my comp and it's gonna bring in my car right over here. Now, something to keep in mind is that there is no way to texturize things right now or change textures or disable certain parts of the model. Um, as of this beta right now, I can only input those three model types and the textures have to be attached to the actual model, otherwise it's not gonna work. Now I already imported this, but if you import it for the first time, you'll get this kind of dialogue right here called the model settings. And by default, you can change the object scale to whatever you want. You can make a comp size so it's easily accessible if things are not kind of scaled properly. Or if you're an advanced user, you can go into the advanced tab and actually change the scale of things and switch between like meters, centimeters, millimeters, depending on how your model was scaled and designed in your 3D application. And there's some stuff like the up axis, the Y axis and so on and so forth. So very, very primitive settings. And we can scale things up and manipulate them just like how you would expect. And remember in the new build, we have a default camera, which you can go ahead and use and rotate around. And as you can see, it renders pretty fast and it's using this new kind of render engine here called Mercury 3D, which you'll notice right here. So it's a little bit different from the Cinema 4D render, um, but you have a Mercury 3D engine right now. And by the way, this model and the next model I'm gonna be using is from Carol Miklas. Very awesome model, very nice. Um, and as you can see, it renders pretty fast. You can see all the fine details and everything. It uses the default lighting um, until you create your own. And as of right now, if you create a camera, the depth of field is not gonna work. And if you create a new light, for example, We'll create like a point light, make sure shadows are on. And you'll notice that yes, we can light the scene with our light. Um, and it will light it up, but it will not cast any shadows. So there's no shadow settings as of right now, no depth of field settings as of right now. And another thing to keep in mind is that as of right now, all the models are static. So you won't be able to like separate them into little pieces like in Element 3D, for example. Um, you would need to kind of, you know, save each individual model separately, bring them all in, and then you can rig them with like nulls and stuff like that. But there isn't a clean way to separate different model parts in a single model file in After Effects as of right now. And there's no support like OBJ sequences or anything. So as of right now, their focus is on bringing in static images and being able to kind of manipulate them with position scale, rotation, all that stuff right there. Soon they will probably add the ability to change the materials on the models. They said they're going to be implementing shadows soon. Now, if you had multiple models in the scene, you can see that we have both of our models here and they're kind of linked together and highlighted in this 3D cube looking icon, kind of showing that they kind of interact in the same 3D space. And so if we go ahead and rotate around, You'll see that all the models occlude each other properly. They kind of interact in the same space. So you don't have these weird layer space combination that you run into with 3D layers and After Effects um, with like particular and stuff like that. But if they're in the same scene, they're kind of linked like this. They kind of behave as if they're sure in the same environment and they occlude each other nicely as you would expect um, in an application like this. Um, without any layering issues in this particular case. Now, if you did put a 2D layer in between these two, it would break this link and things would kind of look kind of funny. Um, but again, this is kind of a beta version. Now, what I'm really hoping to see in the future is hopefully features like Element 3D, right? Element 3D at its core is pretty fundamental, right? It's position, scale, rotation. You can duplicate things, you can move things around. But if they can add stuff like ambient occlusion, HDR lighting, um, depth of field, stuff like that, that would really kind of bring this together. And then the ability to, you know, animate certain things and you know, animate certain parts, maybe clone things, just so that we can actually integrate 3D into our compositions and VFX shots easily. 
without having to use a third party plugin like Element 3D. Uh, this is really, really great in the right direction. And I really hope to see some of these changes occur very soon, including the addition of new file formats instead of GLTFs and OBJs, um, as well as being able to use stuff like Z-Depth, normal maps, wireframe rendering, basically Element 3D, basically. Um, so yeah, so just kind of a quick little brief overview about this kind of 3D feature within After Effects Beta. Um, you can download it right now and kind of tr try it out, play around with it. It's pretty primitive, so you won't be using this for anything production grade as of right now, but you know, just import stuff, kind of see what you think and see what the speed is like. Maybe they'll add Notion Blur soon, who knows? But this is definitely a step in the right direction. Hopefully they can kind of simplify their kind of 3D workflow because in the past, this Cineware and the Cinema 4D renderer and native 3D extrusions of text and stuff, it gets kind of confusing. Um, so we'll see where it goes. Before I go, I want to give a quick thanks for a sponsor over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is a long platform to create an amazing website with its first store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing things to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support and best of all, I use promo code Dojo at checkout. Go ahead and save 10% off your order and support the dojo. Check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So let me know what you guys think about the new 3D features within After Effects. If you guys like them, what you want to see, what things I could add to make it a lot better for you guys. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.